everybody, Clint Gage here with Joshua Yale. Hello. We are going to be talking about episode eight of Watchmen. So, big time spoiler alert, if you haven't watched episode eight yet, there it was. Spoiler alert. Joshua. Yes, we watched The Watchmen. We watched The Watchmen. Uh, best episode so far? Hands down, the best episode. Hands are down. I keep saying that every episode, but sure. this one truly was. And the reason why, I think it was essentially this whole show is like what happens when you have a wayward romance with Dr. Manhattan, right? Yeah. Ellen Moore and David Gibbons, of course, they created this iconic character who experiences everything at the same time. And so it's like, if you were to fall in love with a character like that, what would that be like? And it would be like what we saw in this episode. I thought it was so great. Yeah, yeah, it was great. So uh, one of the, the most interesting things about the episode, like, like you said, it's, it's this sort of chicken or the egg kind of situation that's been presented here with like, the way that this episode tied the entire mystery of this season together uh, was, was super cool because of how Dr. Manhattan experiences time. So now we've got, um, uh, Dr. Manhattan essentially started this whole thing. Yeah. So, so we find out that uh, Angela tells Dr. Manhattan about the Klan robes in uh, Judd's closet simultaneously 10 years earlier, <laughs> which is a thing you have to say for Dr. Manhattan. Dr. Manhattan tells Will about that and it launches this whole thing. And so Angela's got this moment of like everything crashing down around her and then she realizes that she started this whole thing. And so the fact that like it's such an interesting way to weave Dr. Manhattan's powers into this mystery. Yeah, you can tell that they were probably like, okay, if we're doing this Watchmen show, this sequel, what's it gonna be about? Obviously it has to have Dr. Manhattan in it. And it's like, okay, well we have, wanna introduce a new character who, who falls in love with Dr. Manhattan and what would that be like? So I, I could, I could yeah. totally be, see that this was the sort of genesis because uh, of, of the story because um, it allows for you to do these very unique things you could only see in a Watchmen show that has Dr. Yeah. Manhattan in it. Um, so you're right, it was that revelation that uh, she was the one who essentially incited the incident that started um, this show, like the main mystery that she's been trying to solve. It was, it was her own doing. Um, and I, yeah, that it's been like a really fascinating ride to get to where we are now. Yeah. I also think it was an interesting um, way to kind of work backwards with the episode because you keep finding out all of these things piecemeal across the episode because it's from Dr. Manhattan's perspective, which is near impossible to kind of con communicate. But like, I didn't at first buy that they were in love at all. Like the idea that Dr. Manhattan was just like, hey, I love you. I'm like, wait, what? No. And then at the end, when she's so determined to save his life, he's like, oh, this is the moment that I fall in love with. I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. Like, so it was, it was just a, a fascinating way to deal with the character. Um, the, the big question that I have where the episode ends is he was talking about how the Seventh Cavalry was going to teleport him somewhere and capture him and destroy him, right? Then he was like, it has to happen. And he says it literally has to happen. But with the way that he took out, I mean, he and Angela both took out the Seventh Cavalry, and there's just one guy kind of lingering. I'm like, it didn't have to happen in the sense that it was unavoidable, right? Right. The way he was in the coolest way possible, exploding <laughs> everyone's head, stopping bullets yeah. from hitting Angela. What a cool scene. Uh, but it felt like he almost left that last guy there on purpose. Right. And we're assuming it's because he did that on purpose, but we don't know the reason why. Right. To, to him saying that it has to happen feels like a Doctor Strange, this is the one in three million whatever ways that this has to go. So if, if the whole episode was about tying the whole mystery together from Dr. Manhattan's perspective uh, of seeing all of time at once, you know, he clearly knows something else is going to happen. He's not, he's not done. Like, he's got right. another role to play in this. Yes, it did look very painful for him yeah. when he was uh, zapped by that laser and teleported to their, their chamber. Uh, to the their... point where I'm like, he says that's what they're going to do, but this is the point where I'm like, is he dead? It looked like he's dead. I think he survived. I, yeah. I think it was it was not pleasant for him. Sure. Like his tachyons are like his kryptonite, right? right. And it says tachyon laser. Um, so that's, yeah, I think he's still going to be around, I think, for the finale. I don't know what they're going to do, but I do know that this is going to come up again. It has to. The fact that he said, you know, if I could, I could make something for somebody to ingest and eat, and then they would get my powers. And yes. well, uh, Keen, Senator Keen wants his powers. So I think that'll come up again in the finale. He'll like create maybe another egg right. uh, to keep that imagery going. And then he will present it to him to eat so he can get his powers. Maybe he will give him his powers and it'll be too much for him. And like his head will explode or something. Yeah, that'll be fun. So like the whole, the, it, it was set up a couple episodes ago that, that's what 
the seventh cavalry was up to. It's like, yeah, you could be the president or you could be something better. So it's like they somehow know that this is that he's able to do this, which is another thing. Like, at what point did Dr. Manhattan tell that to somebody who then told it to somebody else? And like, it's it's all a giant mess. So like, we could get another totally nonlinear episode for episode nine that sort of explains how uh, Sheriff Judd's wife knew that it was all happening. Yeah, they seem very, very well informed. Very well Calvary. informed. So yeah. they, they've got to have some sort of intel or source of information to how, yeah, they're figuring all this out. Right. So the other thing uh, that went on in this episode, we got a lot more with Adrian Veidt again. Yes. Uh, we got a lot to see him and Dr. Manhattan talk 10 years ago where Veidt is still at his Antarctic base, uh, pyramids, whatever, still dumping squids on everybody. Um, and we get this is actually a, kind of a lovely conversation between the two of them. Like they're two characters that don't have anything to hide from each other. And so it was a very honest conversation, I thought, which was really cool. Yeah, this is another thing, I think, again, when they're probably laying out the show and like they're storyboarding it and stuff, they're like, we need to find a really awesome, compelling reason to have these two characters meet again. Right. Because at the end of the Watchmen graphic novel, they were done with each other and yeah. they have that very iconic send off where, you know, he's Dr. Manhattan says, you know, I'm going to go try my hand at creating some life in you know, Which nothing we see do in this episode. Exactly, yeah. and the whole nothing never ends. They bring up these moments, these lines, and it just shows that you know Damon Lindelof and the other the writers, uh, the people who are making this show, really have just such an affection for the comic mm -hmm. and um, by bringing those up. But yeah, it was so cool to see, um, one, just get, get the whole backstory of how Vite wound up on a moon of Jupiter right. on Europa and why he's there. At the beginning, uh, obviously, it was probably a, a, he probably felt like it was a gift of like, he's like, hey, I saved the world and I get no credit for but it. He was very excited to go. He was in tears yeah. thinking about Oh yeah, going. and to see a character like that who's generally pretty, you know, keeps mm -hmm. it together, to see him showing so much emotion was, that was a very profound scene, a very profound yeah. moment of finally somebody came and gave me my reward for saving the world. As we know, it was sort of a monkey paw situation mm -hmm. because once he got there, he probably enjoyed it for a little bit. But just like Dr. Manhattan got bored with just these like subservient creatures in this utopia, uh, he clearly he now wants to escape. Yeah. So and obviously we're thinking he eventually w what we're seeing is in the past and we'll eventually see him catch up to the main narrative. Right. Yeah, we have to. So that's that's the two big questions that it raises, because one is, is how long uh, how much time has passed since for Vite in this series? In the episodes of the series, has it been real time? It can't have been real time right along with the the show because we find out that the trial of Vite has been going on for three hundred something days. Yeah, like a year. Um, yeah, so the trial has been going on for a year. So then you start thinking maybe every episode that we've seen so far has been a year. So we've we've sort of lived through eight years of Vite's life on Europa at that point. Right. Well, um, one episode, they didn't show him at all. That was the flashback episode mm -hmm. for Hooded Justice. Yeah. So maybe he was there for like six years. And he didn't. we didn't get a flashback this episode. Yeah. So maybe it's like five years. And then I looked up how long it takes, folks, <laughs> how long it takes to get to Jupiter from Earth. And it, uh, it all depends on how the... The distance of the planets. Which, Where they're which, at in the orbits. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, but it can take anywhere from two to eight years. Okay. And uh, based on satellites that we've sent. But if they get that on the, the lower end side, that means that whoever saw him in that satellite, which mm -hmm. I'm assuming is Lady True's. Save me D. Yeah, save me D, D whatever the, the rest of his message right. said. Um, uh, I think that she would have need, she would need two years to send a craft out and then another two uh, or more years to the craft to come back to right. get him. So that would line up to about 10 years. If he's yeah. there for five years, then he's there's that space travel for you know five more years. I think that would line up to him showing up for the finale. But to do what? I don't know. What right. is he even aware of of what's been going on? How is he involved? I can't wait to see. Right. A couple of things. Manhattan did tell him that he will see his utopia at some point, like he told him that. And I don't think he was referring, he wasn't referring to Europa in that, like so, oh. so I don't think he couldn't have been. So he will get back to see sort of the fruits of his labor, I, I, would, I would imagine. Huh. So he's gotta get back. Uh, the other thing, um, I mean, besides what role he has to play, who's been dumping squids this whole time? Right, because he, he was manually doing it. <laughs> and that's one of those things I was like, wait a minute. Like, it was one of those sort of, like, Lindelof kind of, like, it wouldn't it be cool to see him dumping all these squids and then full stop done thinking about it. But if he's been gone for 10 years, and we've seen squids get dumped, obviously, in, in the episodes. So, like, it's been happening. Um, 
Yeah, it would be so easy. Like, I, it, it, yeah, it, it would be easy be enough to imagine that he had it on set on some automatic process, like on a timer or something. Except but he's yeah, pulling levers. Yeah, we're so, watching him pull the lever. How is it happening? Because he got sent almost. Oh, how about this? Because there was an unknown amount of time that passed between when they had that, when we saw that, and then when he gave Doctor Manhattan the ring to go in his head. Uh huh. So maybe in the, the time between that, he turned some knobs and set a timer for I mean, it to that's, do. Yeah, that's a safe, it happens off screen. That's a safe assumption. A safe enough assumption that he can be like, look, if you really want to worry about where the squids came from, like you're missing the point of the show. Yeah. Which I'd like to think I'm not, but it still bugged me. Anyway, um, <laughs> point. <laughs> so moving on to, uh, to something else, that, looking ahead at episode nine. Um, the big question that I have uh, is how is how is lady true involved in all of this and in, in like because i feel like she's doing she's got to be doing more than just like gearing up to stop it from happening right and then also we get a, a weird little reference because in this in the conversation between lady, um, dr manhattan and vite um manhattan asks how vite knew that he was on europa and not mars uh, and he says a little elephant told me which i think that's got to be because of the elephant that we saw in episode eight or episode seven rather, that uh, Angela was hooked up to. I feel like that's got to be a reference to Lady True. So Lady True's got to be involved uh, in knowing where Manhattan is, maybe even knowing how Manhattan works with the egg that might transfer powers and all that stuff, because, like, pharmaceutically, I imagine she would want to get a hold of some of that, too. Yeah. Well, there was that episode where, which took place in the past where she um, buys the land from the, this couple, this right. unassuming couple, and then something land, like, crashes from space on that land, we still don't know what that was, right? right? So that will probably play into... Could have been Vite. Yeah, that could have even been in the future. I don't know. Was there a date on that? Someone in the comments know. will probably correct me if I'm wrong on this. Um, it was hard but, to tell. Like, Was that the land where she actually ended up building the, the tower? I think so. The but, clock? Then, the, but then what crashed in the past that she would then use that same land to build the Millennium Clock? Who knows? I don't know. But, um, but we better I, find out. So nice. actually, La the Lady True's company... Uh, the emblem, if you look at it, it actually looks like an elephant. Mm -hmm. Check it out, folks. Well, an elephant never forgets, hence the nostalgia and working with memories. Yes, that all fits together. Super clever. I am I am interested to hear how it all yeah ties together. Like there's also the bust of Vite that's like right there front and center in her office. And I wonder if it's going to get as weird as somehow Vite is like, that is Vite. I don't know. What? I, that is super weird. I'm, 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 I'm ex this, that's just an example of me. Like, it's just his face sitting there watching things happen. And if Manhattan tells him, you will get to see your, uh, your utopia happen, there's some, something weird about that bus sitting there front and center watching all of this happen. And like the monkey paw aspect of everything that he's asked for in one of it. Like, I bet there's something weird with that bust. And that's just that's just what the show has me doing. The show has me guessing like what's going to be the weirdest possible outcome. <laughs> I just took it as a reminder to the audience that he uh, she own, she bought she took over his company. Yeah. And she has a very strong connection to him and, and like idolizes him. It's like this giant gold statue of uh, I want, of him. So, but I I I want some weird I want some weird stuff happening. Given, True's, True's into cloning. She's already putting her parents into these right. little kids, so she, I just want his consciousness to be trapped in that bus for no. some stupid reason. <laughs> You're right. We already had somebody smash open someone else's uh, forehead, yeah. so Dr. Manhattan could pop out. So, so really... don't you tell me it's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's what we think about Episode 8 is what we think. It might be headed in Episode 9, crazy as it may be. Go Actually, ahead. can I drop my final theory? Please do. Is that to, to complete the that this series is essentially one big epic love story with Dr. Manhattan and Angelo, I think he will give his powers over to someone else, uh, probably Keen. Something bad will happen to him, and uh, he'll die. He'll like, explode because he can't handle it. But it will leave Dr. Manhattan mortal, and he'll be able to have essentially a happy ending oh. with Angela. And that will be like the answer to his you know really annoying, I see all time at all times Thing. Right, so he can like officially commit to being there and present with Angela. Yeah, I think that would be awesome. That that's, where, be... that's where I'm putting my money down. And then that's probably what the Millennium Clock has to do is it's going to destroy both Manhattan and Senator Keene <gasps> when they have, and so nobody gets Manhattan powers anymore. Dun dun dun. No, you, I'm taking my toys and I'm going home, is what she says, and then she puts it in a pill, sells it, gets even more rich. How about that? That's season two. All right. That's what we think of episode eight. Let us know what you think about it. And also, what are your craziest guesses about what we're going to see in episode nine? Is it crazier than Vite being trapped in his own bust? 
uh, surely you can come up with something. Let us know about it in the comments below. And as always, subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch. We'll see you next time.